what's up guys welcome back to the channel New York Sports Central today we're going to be talking about the 2019 New York Yankees season where it saw them get ousted in the ALCS by the Houston Astros yet again just like in 2017 and this time it took them six games to get eliminated but the Yankees did overall have a very good season but as it always is with the Yankees an appearance in the World Series or not winning the World Series is viewed as a failure, as Aaron Judge was quoted saying after the loss. So, this year, the uh, Yankees won the AL East for the first time since 2012, and that was a big thing for them, winning the, the, the AL East division title. Um, because the first time since 2012, obviously, and also there's a major stat saying that the Yankees didn't win the pennant for the first time in a, in, in one decade, and that was the first time that has ever happened, and that's not good, but it kind of shows the parity of the Major League Baseball and how it's going towards more of an even playing field where the Yankees aren't always so dominant. Um... Also, uh, yeah, it, it, it's the first decade since the, the 1910s, actually, which is a very long time ago. I'm going into it. Um, the 2019 signings, well, we'll see how they, how they panned out. Chuy Tulinski signed a league men deal. Um, he retired shortly thereafter because injuries forced him into an early retirement, so that contract is, is, is sort of a wash. Zach Britton signed a, a three-year extension and he's very good for the Yankees and their strong bullpen and lefty arm option. He's fine. DJ LeMahieu signed a two-year $24 million deal. He was an amazing under-the-radar signing. As everybody thought from him coming out of Colorado that he was just a, a product of Coors Field, they're not an actual good hitter when he went to prove that he was the Yankees MVP really this year. Um, and he had an MVP candidate season. And we'll get into his final stat line. Uh, DJ LeMay, he batted 327, which was second in the AL this year. And he had 26 home runs and 102 RBIs. Um, he has set career highs in, in hits, doubles, home runs, RBIs, and runs scored. And he had the lowest pull percentage of all major league batters. So this is an old school throwback hitter who just tries to get on base and hit for average. And he proved to be a vital point for the Yankees. And everyone's trying to go for the launch angle, home runs, and big home runs, and big hits. DJ Pamehi was kind of an old school player and showed him that that helps. And he's very versatile. He plays all positions. This year, he mostly played first base, outdoing Luke Voigt for a job because the Yankees have so much highly talented infielders. Um, also, Sonny Gray was traded to Cincinnati. That Sonny Gray and, and prospects came back to the Yankees. Um, Sonny Gray was not a guy who worked out on the Yankees. He's probably better off in a small market like Cincinnati where he showed that he pitched very well. Um, he's not a guy that probably fits into the New York media and atmosphere, so lesser magnified team helped him. Um, but then the lack of starting pitching will prove to be the demise of the Yankees in the playoffs, though, however. And also, Adam Ottavino signed a three-year deal. He's the first person in Franco's history to win number zero. Severino signed a four-year contract extension. He looks to be the ace for the upcoming years. Aaron Hicks signed a seven-year deal. He looks to be the center fielder for the future. And also, major injuries... That were Dylan Patances spend most of the year on the IL, so that hurt them because he was their their setup man. 
and and we said Reno spent a lot of the year with rotator cuff in, inflammation and, and was hurt for a while. But the Yankees pretty much steamrolled through the whole year, winning the AL East and being one of the top teams in baseball. And they knew they had to get through the playoffs, though. But at the trade deadline, they didn't really go for any pitching. Meanwhile, they, they really needed starters because all their AL op opponents had strong starting rotations. And the Yankees probably should have gone after Marcus Stroman, and the Mets should have not gotten him. I'm thinking the Mets got him, so the Yankees couldn't get him. Or it's also been known that Brian Cashman didn't want Stroman. Stroman kind of talked about it on Twitter, which was kind of a, a funny thing. Uh, here's the deadline trades and acquisitions that the Yankees earlier on they they acquired Edwin Encarnacion from from Seattle for cast considerations and a minor league pitcher Juan Venn. Um and on the deadline they got Terrence Gore from Kansas City for cast considerations a minor league player the Yankees also acquired minor league left hander Alfredo Garcia from Colorado in exchange for right handed pitcher Joseph Harvey. And the Yankees weren't active at the trade deadline, and they really should have been. Because they have a lot of assets in the minor leagues that could be major league players, but they're not on the Yankees, because the Yankees have a lot of superstars everywhere, and they can't slot in. So they had a bunch of assets to go at their starting pitchers. Maybe they could they could have got Zach Greinke instead of the Astros. The Astros didn't really need Zach Greinke, but the Yankees did. So the Yankees won the AL East with 103 wins and 59 losses. And they versed Minnesota, and they dominated. They, they, they steamrolled Minnesota and swept them. Minnesota was severely outmatched. Although they led the major leagues in home runs, the Yankees were second in, a, in major league home runs. Um, they saw their... Best record against the Baltimore Orioles, which is obvious because they were the bottom feeder of the AL East. The Yankees finished 17 and 2 against the Orioles, and they were a strong 14 and 5 against the Boston Red Sox, which was good uh, for the Yankees. Uh, also, looking at it against their other AL East opponents, they were 11 and 8 against Toronto. They had some trouble against Toronto. And against all NL teams, they were 12-8. and eight. And against the Rays, they were 12-7. and seven. So they were able to get a positive record, or above, highly above 500 against every AL East opponent, proving for them to win the AL East. And going into their roster, uh, Miguel Andujar was hurt most of the year, like towards the end, and that made Gio Urshela slot in, and he really showed that he could play too. Um, pretty much just like a bunch of guys slotted in for numerous injuries, and the Yankees showed that they had great organizational depth. So a player that nobody thought was going was gonna to come, come about was Gio Urshela, former Toronto Blue Jays and Cleveland Indians farmhand. He had a great year. And he's 28 years old, and no one really thought anything of him. And he was designated for assignment by Toronto. He cleared waivers and was assigned to Triple A Buffalo for for the Toronto Blue Jays. And he hit 244 in that year. And then he was traded to the Yankees for cash, and he assigned he was assigned to Triple A Scranton Wilkes Bear. And he changed his batting stance, and he hit 307 in 2018 in the 2019 season in 107 plate appearances. And he was called up after Andrahar had a right shoulder labrum tear, and he just started hitting when he came up. And then Andrahar opted for the season-ending surgery, and he went in his spot, and he just dominated, and he made it seem like... Um, Andujar was not even gone because Rochelle just stepped up. This is a minor league guy who hasn't done anything in his career and stepped up. Um, of course, Giancarlo Stanton was hurt for most 
of the year. So that made a bigger role for Brett Gardner, who was probably going to see sparing playing time. And Clint Frazier saw pretty much all of his time in the minor leagues because of the emergence of, of Gardner coming back and having a good year. And Cameron Eben was a good bench option for them as well. Um, pretty much the whole offense played well and guys stepped up. Pitching-wise, it was CC's final year, and he's most likely, most likely going to be a Hall of Famer, but he wasn't that effective. Um, pretty much just the pitching was the demise, the starting pitching to be exact. The Yankees had a lot of All-Stars this past year. They had DJ LeMahieu, Gary Sanchez, Gliber Torres, and Masahiro Tanaka, and Aroldis Chapman all went to the All-Star game in Cleveland. Um, and going into the series against the Houston Astros, it was basically just the, the tale of how the Astros... Hitting was more clutch, and and how the Astros had much better starting pitching. And basically, Garrett Cole was able to shut down the Yankees, and that was the main difference in the game. And just the Astros' experience, and just led to them coming out on top because they were a better team. Yeah, and the Yankee season blows up because they're starting pit. Pitcher void wasn't never filled. This is the headline from the Sports Illustrated article after their loss, and it ended. They came close. They 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 forced the game six, and out to uh, sorry, DJ Lemay he tied it up, and it was the first time since, uh, and then I'll, I'll I'll explain what happened first. And Jose Altuve then hit the walk off home run, and it was with George. Uh, Springer on base to make it a 6-4 win and elimination game for the Astros and move on to the World Series. And it, it allowed, or it was the first time since Bill Me 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 Mezerowski in 1967, I believe it was. Let me just verify that, but he played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And... He, he hit a walk-off home run in the World Series when the Yankees tied it up in the top of the ninth and, and the bottom up of the ninth. Bill Mezerowski hit the walk-off home run and he pretty much sealed the deal. It was 1960, sorry, I was way off. The 1960 World Series and, Ot and Altuve is the only the, uh, second guy in the World Series, uh, in playoff b baseball history, to ever do that, to um, win a series on on a, on a walk off after the other team tied it in the top of the ninth, and, and you walk off in the bottom of the ninth. So that was playoff history, and that and that cements Jose Altuve's legacy in baseball lore, and it made the Yankee season a failure. Uh, going into it, they have some free agents to speak of. Um, DD is going to be a free agent, and I think he's going to walk because the Yankees don't have to sign him back because they can have, um, they can have Gliber Torres play shortstop, or they can have Andrahar play shortstop, and they have Ur Urshela now, and he can he, he can play as well, and they have DJ who can play second base, and Greg Bird or Luke Voigt can play first base. So the Yankees don't have to sign DD, and that's good for them because they can save that money, that salary, and spend it on on a pitcher that they that they vitally need. They should go after Garrett Cole because he's going to be on the market. But I believe that they won't. They won't go after him because it, it's been stated that Garrett Cole wants to sign for a California team. My bet is that he signs on the Angels because of Joe Madden is there and they're looking to turn it around. But the Yankees free agents are Dylan Patances, who they should sign back. And Brett Gardner, who they don't really need. He, he's an aging player. 
and they have a bunch of outfielders who can slide into a role. They have Edwin Encarnacion. He has a, a club option for next year, but I don't know if if they'll if it'll be picked up or not. Um, probably not because he wasn't that effective in his time in the playoffs. He was cold. Austin Romine, a good backup catcher. He may come back because he's good defensively. Cameron Mabin was probably going to walk. He's a journeyman who goes around. So the Yankees should, should target all the top free agent pitchers. Namefully, Steven Jasper, if he doesn't be signed on the Yankees. And let's see what happens. And next year, they're looking for a healthy year out of Giancarlo Stan and Aaron Judge. So it's going to be another good year for the Yankees next year in 2020, and they're going to try to win, win the World Series by getting starting pitching because that's the only thing they really need to be a, a perennial World Series champion in my in my estimation. So thank you for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe, and see you later.